Hi, my name is Oliver and I'm an applications engineer here at Maxim. I'm here to talk to you about our serializers and deserializers, or CERTES for short. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to establish the I2C reverse control channel when P-Clock is not available. Now this can be done on any of our CERTES chipsets, but today I'm going to be talking with you about the Max 96705 and 706. These chips will do 14-bit serial transmission over coax or STP. And there's a control channel that allows I2C or UART communication to peripherals on the remote side of the link. They're low power and they're perfect for transmission of video data, especially in an automotive system. Now take this block diagram at the bottom of your screen. On the remote side, you have a serializer and an image sensor. And on the local side, you have a deserializer and a controller. Now inside that coax link, there's two channels. There's a video data channel, which travels from serializer to deserializer, and a control channel, which is bi-directional. Now we are specifically going to be focusing on the reverse control channel because our controller is on the deserializer side and we need to program peripherals in the opposite direction of the video data channel. Now when P-Clock is not available from the image sensor, the reverse control channel and video data channel are also not available. So the question is, how do I use a reverse control channel if it's not there to begin with? Well, let me show you. Now what you may not know is that the serializer can still see those I2C commands on the control channel, but it has no way of acknowledging without P-Clock. Now the trick is to get the deserializer to generate that acknowledge for the serializer, and that will allow the serializer to update its registers. Now I'm going to demonstrate this CERTES chipset in real time. I have my EV kit set up for coax and I2C communication. Jumpers are in their default positions except for the P-Clock oscillator, which I've removed. P-Clock is not connected and the control channel is inactive. You can check the EVKit data sheets for jumper settings. The USB port powers the deserializer and power over coax is used to power the serializer. Don't worry about the breadboard that you see here. It's not connected and we'll get to it later. The GUI makes it super easy to connect to these devices without P-Clock. All you got to do is click Enable C-Link before identify and then click Identify Devices. And there you go, they both pop up. From there, Click Connect. After a few seconds, this window will pop up, and that'll allow you to program the serializer and the deserializer and access both the log low level and some additional features of the chips. But what is actually happening under the hood when you enable C-Link? Let me show you. First, set the I2C local acknowledge bit in the I2C config register of the deserializer. Wait five milliseconds after the command. This will allow the deserializer to acknowledge any commands sent to the serializer. Next, set auto C-Link in the double align 2 register of the serializer. Wait another 5 milliseconds. This will allow the serializer to keep the control channel active when P-Clock is not. Finally, clear the I2C local acknowledge bit in the I2C config register of the deserializer. Wait another 5 milliseconds. The serializer will now be able to acknowledge its own commands. I wanted to show you how to do this using your own microcontroller. I wrote some code to implement this procedure on my handy dandy Max 32630 featherboard. After bringing up the control channel, I have the board set to program the serializer so the DN13 becomes a GPIO. I'll flash this green LED by commanding the serializer to drive that GPIO higher low, and this will prove that my control channel is active. Notice that P-Clock is still disabled, and I've switched over to an external 5 volt supply which powers the serializer through power over coax. I did this because I removed the onboard microcontroller that was on the deserializer board. And I have my I2C master connected directly to the deserializer board. Now we're going to power them up and see if it works. Here we get power to both boards. Now I'm going to press the reset button on the controller. And there you have it. Flashing green LED to indicate that that control channel is active. So let's head over to the logic analyzer and let's see what's actually happening under the hood. To show you how the serializer behaves when the control channel is not available, I tried to write that auto C-Link bit before enabling the local acknowledge. And you can see that I actually got a knack when I tried to do that, which means that the serializer was not able to respond. After writing local acknowledge, then going to write auto C-Link, and then clearing local acknowledge, you can see that I can now access the registers on the side of the serializer. Thank you for watching this video on how to set up a CERTES reverse control channel when P-Clock is not available. Check out the description below for some controller firmware as well as some logic analyzer captures that I use in this video. 
Again, my name's Oliver. Have a great day.